Hello everybody, uh, this, this is uh, part 2 of how to create a login page for your website. We, when we first created the registration page, which is this, and the registration process. This was the code for the registration process. And now we're going to create a login page. Um, in this tutorial, I'm just going to I'm going to create the login form. Uh, we're going to process the login information, and we're going to access uh, pages restricted from login page. I would like to uh, make um, make a change on on the registration page. I noticed I did not include input here, so we're going to inc include that. Um, so this was just basically uh, editing how the registration page looks. So uh, now it looks um, it looks better than before. So hopefully you can make that change. And uh, we're going to now create the the login form here in step three. We'll go to our project file and source file and right click on the on the on the folder and go to PHP web page and we will uh, create a file called login. So in this file, we're going to create a, a login page. Um, I'm going to start by creating a form. And we, we can also include um, a heading, login, page. So all, all we need for the login page is uh, is the uh, email and password of of somebody that that has registered. So we create two fields uh, for the for the um for the email and for the password. One each of, one of each of the fields. So. We're basically going to use uh, the same process we used for the registration form to validate the, the email. And we do this using PHP.
we should be using a filter var here instead um, filter variable and we're going to sanitize email and we're going to validate the email This should be filter var. Sorry about that. On the first uh, validation, we should the first and the, also the second one. They should be filter var. Uh, the function we should use filter var, not filter. Let's make that correction. Um, <coughs> so filter variable, and then we're going to. Um, sign it, uh, validate it so, so um, if this is true then we can print uh, the submitted uh, email which is post email and we can also add add a variable here validate is true So um, <clears throat> um, we're going to add as, as well uh, validate variable here and set it to false. So we can actually track whatever has been printed. The reason we're doing this is so that um, if we submit the form and it has not been validated, we do not want to use the, um, the, the email that was not uh, validated and sanitized. So we're just going to use this variable to determine whether the email is valid when we're submitting the form. <coughs> So uh, we're also going to uh, create an error message. is empty
we're going to see how it looks um, first first we're going to uh, add a submit button we'll add a submit button before we do that um, So we're going to run the page and see. Okay, so we need to add um, email field. Okay, so <clears throat> We're going to create the password field and then we'll edit how the login page looks. We'll basically just, in fact, we can do it right now. We can use uh, whatever we had before from the style sheet and paste it. And to do, uh, to make the work easier, you could also like just create uh, this style sheet on a separate uh, file and then just include it whatever you want to use it so um, oh, that's interesting you can change oh yeah we need to add a div uh, class should work right now okay so we need to we need to create the <clears throat> the div class right above the login uh, heading so we we'll have it here And we're going to create a password field. Right below our email field.
so so this here um it basically prints uh, the password if it's not em if this field is not empty and um, we can just add here we can just add here um, <clears throat> a variable called password and uh, this is the or we can call it password true or password check so we don't have a conflicting variable and we'll set it as true <clears throat> and then we can we can set the password um password check as false so we, we can just use uh, validate and password check rather than uh, using all the posts and stuff so we just add the semicolon and we're also, we are also going to um, create an error message if if the password is is empty to um, ask the user to enter the password Okay, so now we can refresh the page and see the changes we made. And let's let's see if it can give us okay. Um Okay, we need to change here the name should be submit not submit that's why I didn't see the errors okay so here you can see the errors error messages and you can change this to a different color um, if <laughs> just to um, make it make it uh, stand out but let's see if we try and just put anything here it says here please enter an email address So um, the reason it stayed here is because uh, PHP has its own inbuilt uh, email checking system. So we can we can just try adding like a random email. And it should confirm. But if we didn't have like a valid email here, PHP has its own inbuilt, but um, 
the browser so in case just in case we have this uh, this process to validate the email you know sometimes people can can uh, spam your website if you don't have these uh, these uh, email check setups so that's that's just an additional step that I added so the login page um, we're going to submit uh, this information uh, to it and send the user to uh, to the login uh, to the welcome page which is the page that has been restricted entry um, so we're going to create um, we're going to create the uh, welcome page right after um, making sure the, uh, the information provided is is can be processed and sent to the uh, register um, registry uh, the login process rather so if a set post submit and and validate and check is true because if it's true then the, the password is valid and the email is valid so if set post submit and validate and password check we're going to set uh, cookies for For the email and the email and the password so set cookie email okay so we're going to check in the browser if the email and password the user entered has been saved in the cookies and uh, this this one was the previous um, the previous cookies we had set when we registered this uh, this person Jane Doe, but we're going to delete all of them so we can check if the the cookies were set for the email and password. So uh, Uh, let me try creating a better password here so we know it actually works okay so Jindo, so the cookies have been set the reason we're setting cookies is so that we can we can um we can process them 
in the next page because the cookies are saved in the browser so so the cookies have been set and we're going to go to the uh, login uh, process we'll create a file for the login process and we'll also create another file for the welcome page which is after you complete the process the login process so uh, login process file To create uh, a welcome page and also we're going to uh, we're going to create some code to send uh, to send the process to activate the login process using this uh, information set by the user. So by saying we're going to use the header uh, function. Or well, first we're going to uh, uh, write the redirect. Then use the header. We just put it here in a variable, the name of the file, so it's easy for us to to uh, to use the header function. You could also just put login process here login process you can put it here and leave out this this part but I, I like to use the variables because they're easy to change and follow so our uh, lo location to redirect and then we're just going to see if the process works by saying if is set password we're going to print we're going to print a message here um, saying this is the, the login process file and if Yeah, else um, if uh, the cookie is not set for password and email, we should print same. Okay, so it actually works. So we know the process, uh, the redirect process works, and the cookies have been set because we gave us this this uh, message here. <coughs> so right now we need to connect to a database, and uh, this this code was just for testing. But we need to uh, uh, 
uh, connect to the database and verify the information the user uh, provided by uh, checking the database for, for whether the email and the passwords the user used to log in matches any of the registra registered uh, information so we're just going to use a similar pro uh, similar process to connect uh, to the data the PHP MyAdmin database that we used in the registration process uh, which is this but instead we use a different um, we use a different um, SQLs to determine what happens on this stage so we can just copy paste this because that's because it's a similar process um, login process and So we're, going, we're just going to confirm whether the, uh, the cookies have been set. And this code basically, like I uh, said in the pre the registration process tutorial, this code uh, it, it just checks whether the, the, the database uh, exists. And by connecting to the local host root password and login these are the details of the database and if this works you can go to the process of, che of checking whether um, the cookies have been set So if you can connect to the database and this has been set, we need to um we need to, we need to verify whether this email and password matches the user with a similar with similar information. Okay, so um, first we're going to um, put this information in a in a variable. So we put in, I mean, call email and password. Um, we we're also going to need to to uh, 
put some security uh, like um, add some security functions you know, to to make it uh, hard for somebody to uh, break into the database using information from the form so we're going to okay i don't know why it does that but i'll deal with that later um so we're, we're going to um, add some uh, functions to to prevent anybody from breaking into the database um, we're going to first trim and add strip tags um, the trim basically uh, removes any additional spaces that may have been on the form and the strip tags removes any um, HTML tags and then we're going to use um, Uh, MySQL with escape string function. It basically uh, it's a function that uh, that helps uh, that secures the information from being uh, uh, secures the database from being compromised, like through uh, SQL injections. So we're going to, we're just going to specify which uh, database it it is, which is this one here, DB. So this this database and this information this information should be uh, cleaned out to enter this database uh, using this function and. We can do the same for this. And change your password. So uh, we're going to write some uh, SQL code. This SQL code uh, locates locates the user with this information provided. So we're going to go to select first name. It should be our login table. So login table where email where email is. Email this email here. We don't we don't need to confirm the password because only one person can have uh, one email. You can't have many people with many emails. So if you have an email that matches, then uh, if 
if we have an email that matches with with the um, Okay, uh, let's let's try and review this again. Last name, email, password from login table. Okay, email is that. Okay. So once once we identify a user with this email, we're going to um, check whether their passwords match. So we're going to name this process uh, the outcome result and. Um, We're going to send that uh, query So basically this code um, puts all the information in an array. So whatever whatever um, where where the email uh, matched all the all the information okay I'm, I'm just going to um, I'm going to go to the database so I can explain better. Uh, while the exam is loading, uh, I'll, I'll just explain briefly like what what happens here. So, like where the email matches uh, the database, all the information of the of that user for this for this uh, code here, all the information is put in, uh, into an array. And uh, as, as we're still waiting, uh, if <clears throat> like the next process here is going to, uh, we're going to check, like, I'm going to use a loop to check whether there's, there's any uh, match for the, for the email and password in that, in that array.
okay since it's taking long I'll explain that later later but you can just go ahead and and write the next code which is a rule uh, which is to check for the, to check whether the email and passwords match Okay, so while it's still loading, uh -huh. we're, we're just going to continue. So, so here there's an array, and in that array, uh, this is an associative array. So, if the name of this array matches, um, the email input of the user and also this associative array matches the password the user entered then um, we're, we're just going to set other cookies um, first name wherever in the database it shows a uh, first name because this it's an associative array so wherever the first name shows up we'll set the cookie for this particular record And the reason we're setting cookies for the first name and also we'll set one for the last name. The, re the reason we're doing this is so we could uh, is so we can confirm that the user that we're looking for has actually um, has, has actually uh, logged in and <clears throat> we will we'll, we'll demonstrate that on the welcome page uh, but also we have to um, we're going to link or rather redirect the user to the welcome page And in the welcome page, we can have a code to check. 
check if the cookies have been set for the first name and last name. So we just gave them our uh, variables that are easy to uh, manage and we're just going to print a message here saying welcome first name last name okay so we're going to go back to the page, but um, just just to mention what I was what I was explaining. Here's the login database. So this these records here, they'll be put in an array this process here if row my fetch array result and the result is basically this query the SQL to check first last email password from login and this database which is login DB so all of this will be put in a, an array and we can even add um, ID here so we can the user can also so we can display it also in the welcome page um, we can add ID here and set cookie oh we made a mistake here it should be, there should be last name it's first last and then we can also add ID and in the welcome page we can also add ID as well so ID here Here we'll add a ID so if also the ID has been set <clears throat> it should uh, display the message so we're going to add ID here and ID there and then we can provide the ID information so uh, we we'll, we're just going to go back So uh, we we had um, registered uh, Jane Doe in our database. Jane Doe, 
with this information email the their email and password so jingdo gmail and password we can delete this we can start over again so jingdo make sure the password is correct and we can log in okay so there was an error on line 23 login process line 23 here Uncaught error call to undefined function. It says it's undefined. Okay, so this should be MySQL I, not MySQL. Sorry, sorry for that. MySQL I like these, they're MySQL I. So we're going to uh, try this again. Login. Okay, so it actually worked. Welcome, Jane Doe. Your this should be your ID. ID is that. So this is the welcome page and this is the page that uh, was res restricted um, you can see here we have first name last name email this two email and ID were used to uh, log in and then once the information checked out we set cookies for the first name last name no, uh, the, the email and password was the first uh, log information to be saved in the cookies. And then the first name, ID, and last name were, were saved during the process. So um, we're just going to check if the ID is actually three, and it actually is. And um, I'm going to include like a, a, a logout page. So this is the welcome page and then I'll add a logout page. PHP web page. And then logout. So um for the logout page we're going to delete all these information this email first name ID last name password so uh, it take it will take us back to the login page and it won't allow users to uh, to use this information like if somebody uses your um, someone uses your your browser or your computer or the computer you are using they they won't have access to this information it will be deleted once you log out so um, <clears throat> we'll go we'll, uh, we'll check if they have been set and um, also in the welcome page we're going to we need to set a cookie here also so we can know that the user is is active we're going to set um, a cookie called logged in so if the if 
if the user is logged in and they're trying to uh, log out we can basically just track the user and you know use the logout variable or cookie to uh, to uh, log out by deleting all uh, the other information so set cookie um, We can just use the locked okay, Let's just use the locked in, it makes more sense. So I uh, hope we uh, <clears throat> will refresh and see if the cookie has been set. Okay, so undefined variable. have logged in as true that's the, the value of logged in or we can just use yes we can just use a uh, a string instead of a condition so um, okay so logged in we know it's been set so if we set cookie logged in to delete all all the other cookies, cookies that were set so so the user information remains private So this code basically deletes on uh, any cookie, any information on the first name, deletes the, the first name cookie and its values and we'll do this for all the other, all the other cookies although there is an easier way you can use by using sessions and using the session ID you can just delete uh, this is the session ID and we delete all of these but you know, to be more like more transparent of what's going on I'll just use uh, these uh, I'll just use um, the cookie names to delete them
Oh, uh, so there's six of them. There are six of them. Mm. So we are logged in and uh, we'll redirect the user to the to the um, login page after deleting the cookies. So with the um, we'll print here again. So I created a logout link to this page, and um, let's let's see if it shows up. Okay. So if the user clicks logout, it takes them to this page. The cookies are delete, deleted, deleted, um, the user will be redirected to the login page. This is the, the function to redirect the user. It's called header. So uh, we redirect the user. So let's see if. You can actually log out. Okay. So um, we are also going to need to uh, delete this. We'll, we'll include that here in the say uh, in the logout process. So we'll. Delete that locked in. And then uh, <clears throat> we're going to try and see if, uh, if, we, if there are any errors like uh, login or um, information like this uh, being still being present, or maybe someone can, ac can access the 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 welcome page uh, by by using the forward and back buttons. So we'll just see how it how it works and if there are any any uh, loopholes that cannot allow somebody to access the welcome page. Now this time we we'll use uh, John Doe. This was the John Doe here. And um, password is not four five. Welcome John Doe, your ID is two. And 
and Jen Doe, her ID was three. So logging out. And let's, let's try this again. I think there are some loopholes, but let's just check. Okay, so there, there aren't any loopholes right now. Because if I log out, I'm not allowed to uh, go forward again. But let's try using a different browser because they usually have uh, different experiences or different uh, features. So let's use Google instead. the login page um, what we're going to do here is go to properties and make sure that uh, the page that's been loaded just sends us to to the to the, um, to the link page So instead of it loading like on the registration page, it should load on the index page. Okay, so we're going to log in and we'll use Jane Do. Welcome into your ID is is three, and then log out. So you, you can't log back in with any information. Then, so the loopholes have been closed, and the work uh, the welcome page can be anything. Like I said, um, I'm going to uh, upload another video uh, explaining some of the security issues that make that can be improved for the login page <clears throat> like for, for the passwords hashing the passwords in the database in case someone breaks in the database and also um, and also um, sorting uh, the passwords so uh, someone can't run a program that can uh, like if someone creates a, a weak password you can someone can run a program that basically uses the dictionary to uh, input passwords you know and try to uh, try to access uh, their their information so uh, thank you for watching my tutorial and uh, in case you have any questions you know or any comments just leave them uh, in the comment section and uh, thank you and have a good day